Um, well, I was in school for journalism at Ryerson, um, and while I was while I was going to school for broadcasting, I I was getting a little frustrated with the way the news cycle was working, um, and you know, kind of the 24-hour news cycle, and um, I felt like storytelling on in broadcasting wasn't giving the room the, that stories needed to breathe. Um, and I was really always interested in long format storytelling. I was also doing theater at the time on the side. Um, so between kind of like exploring theater and getting frustrated with the news world, um, I thought documentary might be an option for me. Um, and so I kind of fell into that as well, just like exploring it, doing short docs, and then realizing um, that was a medium for me and then from there going into narrative because I don't want to just document what it is but I want to imagine what can be and that's possible through, through narrative to drama and, and comedy and television as well maybe one day. I mean it, I think the first thing is like being a South Asian woman or being a Tamil woman, being a woman of color. Um, my desire is always to like create space through my work for us to live on screen. Um, and then so many of the members of my communities or my multiple communities are women of color. My closest friends are all women of color. We don't often, I mean we're starting to more, I'm hoping it's not like a wave or a flash, but we don't often see ourselves um, on screen uh, in the diversity of us, right? Like we see one representation of black or one representation of brown or we don't see the full breadth of what we are, what we look like, uh, you know, who we are because we in and of ourselves are so diverse and so different. Um, so for me, um, you know, for you know, decades in North America, the film and television world has very much focused uh, on white narratives or the narratives of white folks um, and, and that they've been unapologetic about that. So for me, uh, it's important to be unapologetic about wanting to see uh, brown and black folks on screen to give them a chance not to just be in front of the camera but also to be behind the camera because lots of incredible people and crew um, who can do all the technical things that everybody else can do. Um, so that's kind of my focus is like and the reason why I do it is because we don't see enough of it and if I'm in this medium and I have the capacity and the tools and the support to do it then why wouldn't be, I be unapologetic about um, making sure that women of color are at the forefront of, of the stories that I tell or the stories that I support. I think so. I think it's definitely like changing and shifting. Some of what you're seeing, for example, like Issa Rae is such an incredible success story, right? Going from her YouTube series, Awkward Black Girl, to now having an HBO series with Insecure. Like you're seeing the capacity um, of people who maybe didn't have access, many of us didn't have access um, to the industry for so many decades are now, now just creating our own content and the industry is following us or recognizing us or calling us, which is interesting. And we're also getting to tell the stories that we want to tell in our own way, but through their platforms, which is interesting. We're also creating our own platforms like uh, Ava DuVernay and her team with Array distributing films by people of color and women. Um, so, I mean, I think things are shifting because we're seeing a lot more uh, black folks, indigenous folks, and other people of color in leadership positions and in, in kind of the business making of it, of, of the film and television industries. Um, and for that reason, I think things are starting to get better. And I mean, it's been progress, slow progress over decades. We're not the first to do it. Like, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. So many people before us have paved the way for what we're doing now. Um, and so I think it's going to continue to shift, ex especially with um, our access to tools and equipment that we haven't had before. Like we don't need big, you know, red cameras or studio cameras. People can use a DSLR or their phone and, you know, record a film. Like Tangerine on Netflix was filmed on an iPhone. That's incredible, and it's a story about trans folks. And so. I think that um, I think that we're going to continue to see changes, but I don't think it's nearly where it needs to be. We have so much work still to do. I just believe growing up, I was lighter skinned to my family in their eyes by their standards. I was considered light skin, um, and so there was always commentary about you know not going out of the sun, not losing my color, not getting too dark. And it was just to like get the point across of how it, how how intense it was, or how much the commentary uh, 
was present growing up as a child, but you know, it was very much reflective of being lighter and being considered that being considered a great thing or a wonderful thing and something to preserve, which is inherently so problematic and, and difficult to think about. I think it exists in all communities of color. I think at the root of shadism for many communities of color is also anti-blackness. So um, I think like how people treat those in their communities um, is coming from a framework of anti-blackness if we want to look at it carefully because then that extends towards the black community because there's also racism between communities of color and we can't pretend like there isn't. Um, I think that they are serious issues in every community. Um, I wouldn't say it's worse than. I think that there's also a lot of privilege that comes with being South Asian. Um, I think that we don't experience the same things that black communities do. We do experience difficulties and we have been through, uh, you know, colonialism and the effects of that, but I don't think that it's nearly the same kind of experience, especially for also not just only black uh, folks, but also indigenous folks, especially living somewhere like Canada or in this country or in this land. So, um, yeah, I think it's a huge issue in multiple communities. I wouldn't say it's worse than or less than. I just think it looks different in different communities as well. I think um, when I did the short film, I was forced to um, really recognize what my own privileges were because also I'm like a South Asian woman working on this particular film or a Tamil woman working on this particular film and I don't have the most difficult of experiences in terms of the discrimination based on darker skin tones, right? And so I had to be very honest with myself about that doing the feature film and also what does it mean for me as a Tamil woman who grew up, you know, with lighter skin to do this film that's about multiple, uh, you know, black, indigenous, and other women of color, and then document all of their stories when, you know, it's very different from my own narrative and where does my ethics lay and like how do I preserve that and how do I preserve my responsibility about telling these stories truthfully but also acknowledging my own privileges. Um, so it was a very like important checking and learning experience, internal checking and learning experience for me because it just forced me to recognize that my experience is very, has been very different from those of darker skin women in my community but also other communities of color. Um, and I'll, just to be honest about that and not, you know, not try and hide that or pretend like my experience was anything different. Um, and I think by acknowledging it, that just allowed me to be more honest with myself and with others and it allowed me to meet the people that I was interviewing with more honesty so that we could have a more real conversation. For me, the, the capacity of uh, film and television and storytelling through kind of media uh, formats is that we get to dream and imagine more. We get to, you know, imagine ourselves in comedic situations and dramatic situations and futuristic and sci-fi and horror, like whatever we see fit or we want to try and explore, uh, we get to place ourselves in those positions and we get to see ourselves on screen and I think representation is huge. Um, you know, like when I think of working on Shadism and what I learned there, I think so much of uh, not that it's the roots of it, but what kind of spurred shadism along for many of us internally is a lack of representation we see, our, see in ourselves. Because if you don't see yourself in the books or the music or the film, the, any kind of media art that you're intaking, whether consciously or unconsciously, um, it's giving you messages about who you are or your value and worth. And so I think the again, the capacity of film and television and storytelling to allow people to dream both the artists and the audience themselves and to imagine more um, is why I love it so much. But I, what I would love to do, I, I want to do everything. I mean, I probably will never do horror because I don't watch horror. I, do, I can't study it because I'm always scared of horror and gore so the fact that I can't study it and watch the greats because I get freaked out means I'll probably never do that um, but I love like futuristic stuff I love science I love the comic books turning into films I want to see more of the characters of color which you're seeing uh, from the comic books be made into films um, I want or even just like an independent comic that we want to make into a film I love drama I love comedy so I think anything right now we're writing scripts for two different films and one is a comedy and 
with an element of drama because there's seriousness to life as well and the other one is a, a full-on drama so I am dabbling in everything and, and working with other writers as well um, and I'm interested in doing it all. I might not always write the content that I'm going to film, that, that I'm going to direct um, and I'm okay with that because I think there's better you know, comedy writers out there than me. <laughs>